Okay, and welcome to doublecoverage.com, and we are here at the NFL Wembley game with Executive Director of the NFL Players Association, Maurice Smith. Maurice, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for having me. Enjoy, enjoying the game so far? It's brilliant. <coughs> hey, you know, look, it's a, it's a great opportunity for our players to um, see another part of the country. Uh, London uh, not only did a great job with the Olympics, but uh, the city has been a great host for football. And it's an honor and a privilege for our players to have an opportunity to come to London and play the game. So the NFL season started off somewhat controversially with the uh, referees' labor dispute. Can you tell us a bit about the NFL, NFLPA's position behind this? Yeah, well, you know, our, our position is uh, the health and safety uh, of our athletes on the field and off the field is really our prime concern as a union. Uh, we have an obligation to, to make sure that the league is accountable and being held accountable to providing as safe a workplace as possible for our athletes. And when the, uh, the owners of the National Football League, when the league made a decision to lock out uh, referees who had uh, a combined 1,500 years of experience, and they replaced those uh, union referees with uh, people who were not qualified to maintain the health and safety of the workplace, we felt that that put our athletes in jeopardy. So we started working with the referees um, union uh, we certainly made it clear to the, the league our displeasure. We were prepared to file a grievance against the league for making the workplace less safe. Um, and we were happy that it was ultimately resolved, but we remained, um, uh, and I remained, extremely concerned about how we could get so close uh, to jeopardizing the safety of our players. Indeed, so safety has been something that's been on the mind of Many of, many of the pundits and everyone nowadays, and it's definitely at the forefront of your mind, I'm sure. Um, so in the NCAA, they've recently inputted the, the rule in which if a player's helmet's removed, they're forced to come out of the game for Correct. a play. Um, do you think this is something that the NFL could adopt or should adopt? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm interested in, in any rules that um, improve the process of safety. Uh, one of the things that we have proposed to the National Football League that they have, at least up to this point, inexplicably, uh, inexplicably opposed is, is the use of sideline concussion experts. We want to have a, a physician who is trained in detecting and treating concussions be at every game and most importantly make sure that that physician is not employed by either team so that that expert makes an independent evaluation about what's in the best interest of the athlete um, and whether or not he can return to play if he suffers or is believed to have suffered um, a concussion. So whether it's rules about removing helmets, um, uh, whether it's having sideline concussion experts, whether it's ensuring that players get um, the best advice about keeping themselves healthy. We look at it as we must engage in a process to constantly try to make the game as safe as possible, knowing that the games, as you know, have, have certain inherent risk. Indeed. So uh, there's also the fact that players aren't actually forced to wear any of the lower padding. Is it, have you got any uh, views on this? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is one of those issues of scale. Um, the league certainly has made it clear that they want players to wear... Um, hip pads and thigh pads. Um, we look at that as something that that's worth talking about, but we also will be the first person to recognize that the league doesn't mandate mouthpieces. Mm -hmm. So it's awfully curious that we're in a world where suddenly the league wants to mandate hip and thigh pads, but for every person who's ever put on a, a helmet and a chin strap and played this game, you would think uh, that they would be concerned about uh, whether there are certain mouthpieces that could be developed to decrease um, the, the impact um, or, or mouthpieces that could decrease uh, the chances of a concussion. Those are the types of things um, that we think the league should be focusing on first uh, rather than thinking about hip and thigh pads. Indeed. So one of the most dangerous aspects of the game is the, the beginning to the, every game and after the touchdown, kickoffs. the big kickoffs. Yep. So can you see any, any kind of restrictions or any rule changes or perhaps even the complete abolishment of this part of the game? Because it, it is deemed to be the most dangerous. Well, right. I, I think uh, over the last uh, few years, you've seen a number of changes um, on kickoffs. Um, uh, wedges uh, are, are now illegal. We've pushed uh, the ball forward so that they're more touchbacks. Um, and, and other rule changes, I think that we need to take a look to see what those changes um, uh, have made, whether it has made kickoffs more safe. Um, one thing about we, what we constantly try to do is certainly 
try to improve safety within the game without um, taking away those things that um, that that are um, that frame or typical, uh, and frankly, that make the game fun um, in both teams to compete. Um, you know, we, when we look at all of those things, I, I never really look at one issue, one aspect of the game. It's a macro view of how we increase uh, and make the workplace safer and improve the processes of safety. Um, but at the same time, we are constantly making sure that we don't um, do anything that, that decreases or takes away from um, uh, uh, the natural competition of the game. So at the beginning of this season, there was more offensive points scored than any other season in previous history. And this, people have cited this as perhaps an outcome of the reduction in, in contact during the preseason camps. Do you think this has had, had an effect on, on how the game's been played this you year? Know, I, I don't know. I mean, um, you know, we, again, never look really too much at the issue of whether more points are being scored or less points are being scored. I mean, here's the, the reality of football. Um, uh, on virtually any given Sunday, you can't predict who's going to win. Um, I'm sure that the quarterbacks and, and wide receivers and running backs aren't upset uh, with, uh, with the scoring. Uh, at the same time, my guess is if you talk to defensive players, uh, they tell you that they need to do a better job to keep people from scoring. So, um, you know, when, when we look at sort of the macro issues, um, 20, 30 years ago, people were upset that there weren't enough points that uh, the game was too slow, uh, that there were, were very few big plays, and that uh, the game wasn't exciting enough. You know, now you look going forward, people wonder whether or not there's too much scoring and they want more defense. So um, here's the great thing about the game. There's something for everyone. Um, and at least so far we know that um, viewership is up, uh, revenue is up, um, the excitement of the game is up. And uh, even though there's somewhat of a lopsided score, uh, today, I think a lot of people will probably attribute that to you're watching two of the best teams in the National Football League duke it out. Indeed. So the number of fines as well has been increasing, and, and as the NFLPA, you're touching on um, your player. Maybe the players come towards you appealing these fines. Do you have a process in which you can help the players through their appeal process? And, and is this something that is the NFLPA versus the NFL, or is it something that the players deal with individually? No, it, it's never a situation where the players deal with it individually. We represent every player um, in the fines and in the appeals process. Um, we have neutral arbitrators who review uh, the fines that are imposed on players. Um, I, I think the, the critical question here is um, whether or not the league believes that it can find its way to safety, um, or whether the league wants to engage in a process to actually make the game safer. Um, when the league turns the corner on, on being um, um, true to the process of making the game safer, we will all be in a better place. Okay, so we talked a little bit about players currently in the game, but there's also been a lot of um, uh, press coverage about players outside of the game and how when they finish the game and how they're supported. Right. How is the NFLPA helping kind of track players once they finish and maybe help them that transition from a footballing life to maybe more of a normal life? Sure. Or, or looking up, for, for example, looking after money or anything sure. like that or looking after health as well? Well, I think one of the, the first things that we did was we refused now to draw a distinction between current uh, and former players. Um, you know, playing a, a professional game, that the difference between someone who's a former player and somebody who's a current player is the few minutes that they got cut. Mm -hmm. So w what we've tried to do is started to take a holistic view of starting to train players coming into the National Football League, even players who are still in college, about what to expect, what it means to be a professional. And, and, and what we mean by that is not necessarily a professional football player. It's a professional um, business person of how to manage your finances, how to use football to take yourself to the next level, um, improving the way in which our players prepare uh, for the end of, of what is going to be a short career. And hopefully if we do that better, we will decrease the number of former players who find themselves um, in, in difficult financial straits. Um, but, but at the same time, while we have a number of great programs and, and certainly a number of avenues um, we will never make a change in the overall improvement of our players until each and every individual player takes it upon himself um, 
to prepare to prepare himself and, and, and to be um, a good business person, a good father, a good son, a good member um, in their community. And that's really what we stress. So we will always use and improve, hopefully, the programs that we have to help our guys. But to be dead honest with you, to think that we stress, that I stress in our locker rooms, is this level of professional responsibility where you as a player um, and you as a business person have to decide to avail yourselves of the, of the things that will be helpful in moving you through the rest of your career. So we're in London now with the NFL here and the big show going on, and there's been a lot of talk banded through the, the rumour mill about a possible NFL franchise in London. Now, a lot, of, a lot of the people that we've spoken to in the UK have said that the NFL is coming in with a top-down approach, considering London is maybe, you know, kind of a cash cow to get a few fast bucks from, but can you that's, see... That's the wrong view. So can you see more of a, a bottom-up approach, where, which we develop grassroots football or in and around Europe as a whole, not even just the UK, because there are countries like Germany and Austria who are big bigger uh, followers of the game as well. And, and Poland. Um, well, you know, from some of the people that, that you met earlier today, one of the reasons that we like to come to London is not so much to um, engage in the spectacle of one event. Uh, the reason why we have uh, the folks, um, you know, sitting with us, whether it's uh, people from uh, Poland, people from um, uh, Europe, folks in China, um, uh, whether it is some of your, your teammates who have played the game, we're here because we believe in, in two things. One, we believe in athletes' rights. So to the extent that we can protect um, and further the right of athletes across sport is what we're about as a union. But to your point, um, we believe that it's important to, to start off teaching athletes to be good athletes. And whether they love football or love soccer or, or, or love some other sport, we believe that it, it is our obligation to to not look at football as a business first, but to look at it as um, something that's, that's certainly good for, for young athletes, for building the idea of good teamwork and good sports and good discipline uh, from youth sports on up. Um, I, I've been a youth coach now for, uh, for almost 11 years. Um, so to me, um, I look at my job as an extension of what I do as a youth coach it's building a love for sport at a young age, and if we can benefit from that financially, all the better, but we're not in it to, to benefit financially from the top, from the down. And, and, and I think that is something that if the league um, wants to grow, they should grow with a mind towards building the sport among its youth um, rather than, um, than, than, than perhaps solely focusing um, on, on what the return on investment might be. Okay, that's great. Thanks to Mauricio for joining you. us. Enjoy the rest of the game and enjoy your time in London. My pleasure. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you.